Welcome back to Tiny Predators. In today's video, we're diving deep into the world of parasites, specifically one that has been causing trouble for humans for thousands of years, Ancelostoma duodenale. What is Ancelostoma duodenale? Ancelostoma duodenale is a species of parasitic roundworm, commonly known as a hookworm. This little parasite has a big impact on human health, particularly in tropical and subtropical regions. It's one of the major causes of hookworm infections, which affect nearly half a billion people worldwide. The parasite enters the body through the skin, typically via the feet, and then migrates through the bloodstream to the lungs and eventually to the small intestine. There, it matures and attaches to the intestinal wall, feeding on the host's blood, which can lead to symptoms such as anemia, abdominal pain, and fatigue. Geographical Distribution of Ancelostoma duodenale Ancelostoma duodenale is primarily found in regions with warm, moist climates, which are conducive to the development of its larva in the soil. Its geographical distribution includes parts of Southern Europe, North Africa, the Middle East, India, China, and Southeast Asia. The parasite is also prevalent in some areas of South America and the Pacific Islands. Hookworm infections are more common in areas with poor sanitation and where people often come into contact with contaminated soil, such as agricultural regions. Habitat of Ancelostoma duodenale Ancelostoma duodenale primarily inhabits the human small intestine, where it attaches to the intestinal wall using its hook-like mouthparts. Here, it feeds on the host's blood, which can lead to anemia and other health issues. Outside the human body, the larvae develop in moist, warm soil, which serves as their natural habitat before they penetrate the skin of a new host. This soil-based stage is crucial for the parasite's life cycle, as it requires specific environmental conditions to thrive and infect humans. Morphology of Ancelostoma duodenale Ancelostoma duodenale is a small, cylindrical parasitic worm with a distinct morphology suited for its life as a hookworm. The adult worm is typically about 8-13 mm long, with females being slightly larger than males. It has a curved, hook-like anterior end, which gives it the hookworm name. The mouth is equipped with two pairs of sharp teeth used to attach to the intestinal wall of the host and feed on blood. The body is smooth and tapered at both ends, with a thick cuticle that protects it within the harsh environment of the host's intestines. Egg of Ancelostoma duodenale The eggs of Ancelostoma duodenale are oval-shaped and measure about 60-75 micrometers in length. They have a thin, transparent shell and are typically passed out of the host's body in feces. Inside the egg, Early-stage embryos can often be seen, especially as they develop into larvae under favorable conditions. Once in the soil, the eggs hatch into rhabditiform larvae, which eventually mature into the infectious filariform stage that can penetrate human skin, continuing the life cycle of the parasite. Life Cycle of Ancelostoma duodenale 1. Egg Stage The cycle begins when adult Ancelostoma duodenale worms residing in the human small intestine release eggs. These eggs are passed out of the body in the feces. The eggs are oval-shaped and contain an embryo that develops into a larva. 2. Larval Development in Soil Once in the soil, under warm and moist conditions, the eggs hatch within 1-2 to two days into first-stage rhabditiform larva. These non-infectious larvae feed on organic matter in the soil and mold twice, developing into third-stage filariform larva within 5-10 to 10 days. 3. Infective Stage the filariform larvae are the infectious stage of the parasite. These larvae do not feed but can survive in the environment for several weeks. When they come into contact with human skin, often through bare feet, they penetrate the skin and enter the bloodstream. 4. Migration through the body. After penetrating the skin, the larvae travel through the bloodstream to the lungs. In the lungs, they break into the alveoli and migrate up the respiratory tract to the throat. They are then swallowed and move down the esophagus to reach the small intestine. 5. Adult stage in the intestine. Once in the small intestine, the larvae mature into adult worms. The adult worms attach to the intestinal wall using their hook-like mouthparts and begin feeding on the host's blood. This blood feeding can lead to anemia and other health issues in the host. 6. Reproduction and egg release. The adult female worms begin laying eggs, which are then excreted in the feces, and the cycle starts anew. How Ancelostoma duodenale causes disease, pathogenicity in human and what are the symptoms? 1. Skin Penetration The infectious larvae of Ancelostoma duodenale penetrate the skin, usually through the feet, when a person comes into contact with contaminated soil. This can cause local skin irritation and an allergic reaction known as, ground itch, characterized by redness, itching, and swelling at the entry site. 
2. Larval Migration After entering the bloodstream, the larvae travel to the lungs, where they can cause respiratory symptoms. As the larvae migrate through the lungs, they can cause irritation and inflammation, leading to coughing, wheezing, and, in some cases, a condition known as Loeffler's syndrome, which involves transient pulmonary infiltrates. 3. Intestinal Invasion The primary site of infection is the small intestine. Once the larvae reach the small intestine, they mature into adult worms and attach themselves to the intestinal wall using their hook-like mouthparts. 4. Blood Feeding the adult worms feed on the host's blood by latching onto the intestinal mucosa. Each worm consumes a small amount of blood daily, but with multiple worms, the blood loss can become significant. This blood loss can lead to iron deficiency anemia, which is characterized by fatigue, weakness, pallor, and, in severe cases, shortness of breath and dizziness. Children are particularly vulnerable, and chronic blood loss can result in stunted growth, cognitive delays, and developmental issues. 5. Intestinal damage. The attachment of the worms to the intestinal lining causes mechanical damage and can result in inflammation, ulceration, and bleeding. This contributes to abdominal pain, diarrhea, and in some cases, malnutrition due to the disruption of normal nutrient absorption. 6. Secondary infections and complications. The damage to the intestinal mucosa can create entry points for secondary bacterial infections, compounding the health impact. Additionally, the continuous blood loss and associated anemia weaken the immune system, making the host more susceptible to other infections. Laboratory Diagnosis for Ancylostoma Duodenale Infection 1. Stool Examination The primary diagnostic method is the examination of stool samples. A stool sample is analyzed for the presence of ancylostoma eggs using a microscope. The eggs are oval-shaped with a thin shell and can be identified in fresh or preserved stool specimens. 2. Concentration Techniques To enhance detection, stool concentration techniques such as the flotation method, using zinc sulfate or sodium chloride solutions, can be used. These methods help in concentrating the eggs and making them more visible under the microscope. 3. Serological Tests In some cases, serological tests to detect specific antibodies or antigens related to hookworm infection may be employed, although these are less commonly used compared to stool examination. 4. Endoscopy. In severe or chronic cases, an endoscopic examination of the gastrointestinal tract may be performed to visualize and identify adult worms, though this is less common. What is the treatment for infection caused by Ancylostoma duodenale? The treatment for infection caused by Ancylostoma duodenale typically involves the use of antiparasitic medications. The commonly prescribed drugs include 1. Albendazole, a broad-spectrum antiparasitic that is effective against hookworms. It is usually administered as a single dose of 400 mg. 2. Mabendazole. Another effective antiparasitic drug, often given as a single dose of 100 mg or 200 mg for 3 days. How to prevent Ancylostoma duodenale infection? 1. Improved sanitation. Ensure proper disposal of human feces and promote the use of sanitary facilities. This helps prevent the contamination of soil with hookworm eggs. 2. Hygiene practices. Encourage regular hand washing with soap and water, especially before eating and after using the toilet, to reduce the risk of ingesting larvae. 3. Use of protective footwear. Wear shoes or sandals to prevent larvae from penetrating the skin when walking on contaminated soil. 4. Health education. Educate communities about the transmission and prevention of hookworm infections to raise awareness and promote preventive measures. 5. Regular deworming. In endemic areas, Participate in mass deworming programs that provide antiparasitic treatment to at-risk populations, especially children, to reduce the prevalence of infection. 6. Environmental Management Improve waste management and control soil contamination through proper sanitation infrastructure and practices. Conclusion Ancylostoma duodenale might be a small parasite, but its impact on human health is significant. Understanding its life cycle, symptoms, and how to prevent infection is crucial in the fight against this disease. If you found this video informative, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell for more content on infectious diseases and global health.